The South African Reserve Bank and the Financial Services Board have drafted a code of conduct for the South African over-the-counter markets to protect any potential threat to the RAND trading. This, this preemptive initiative was sparked by the 2013 whistleblowing and investigative journalism, which pointed to misconduct by major international banks in the largely unregulated foreign exchange markets. CNBC Africa spoke to the Deputy Governor, Daniel Minnelli, on what the code is set to achieve. We're launching this code today alongside a review uh, that we've conducted of the operations of authorized dealers in the South African foreign exchange market. Um, relatively early in the process of the review, um, also informed by some of the observations we made around how people were handling things in other jurisdictions, we felt at that point that the South African markets would benefit from an overarching code and uh, actually then started developing it alongside the review and send it out to professional bodies such as SICA and ASISA and the Association of Corporate Treasurers, the Banking Association, the International uh, Banking Association and had their input, uh, their professional uh, input. The idea here is to have an overarching code that essentially pulls things together. Um, you have subsidiary codes that are going to go with this code that are then specialist codes, if you wish, from the various segments of the market. The ACI code is a case in point, for instance, for the FX market, or the Jiva code that we talked about, there are codes for the derivatives market. So this is an overarching code that just basically establishes, if you wish, uh, uh, the tone and, and pulls all the over-the-counter uh, wholesale markets in South Africa together. Our review in South Africa, based on the period uh, that we're looking at, found uh, that uh, there was no um, evidence of misconduct as such. But clearly, that type of finding, as you would have heard, does not allow us to be complacent in any way. We go out, we interact with other regulators, we see what is happening in other markets and try and see how we can strengthen our practices. We try and learn from mistakes that might happen elsewhere with, with three to God. So the fact that we're putting in place this code is not necessarily suggestive of the fact that we've got major problems in our system. It's really to try and strengthen uh, what we've got and have a code that sort of overarchingly gives the tone of what the individual specialist codes are going to be. And as we said earlier on, we would constantly subject this code to international best practice, to alignment. And on the foreign exchange side, for instance, there is a code that is being developed uh, by the Markets Committee of the Bank for International Settlements. And once that is concluded, we will then look at our code and look for alignments and make sure that it meets best practice. So it is not necessarily to suggest that something has gone disastrously wrong and we need to put in big defenses and all that. It's really just underpinning the system, strengthening it and making sure um, that we continue to adhere to best practices in, uh, in, in, in the over-the-counter wholesale markets. Well, this code is not meant to address volatility or deal with any issues that have got to do with growth, underperforming, that's not what is meant. It's not a situation which we are saying this is something that's going to help us out of, out of our problems. This is a code that hopefully, if any contribution it can make, it would be one of giving comfort that the trading in our markets and confidence that that trading uh, happens along ethical lines and that the conduct and the culture issues around foreign exchange trading in our markets do not get to a point of what we've seen in other jurisdictions. So we felt it important to be proactive and not wait until something's gone wrong and rely on levying fines and penalties because at the end of the day, the idea is to embed uh, these cultural norms, more positive cultural norms rather than the ones that have led to the failures such that people do these things as second nature because they believe in them, because they think they're right, as opposed to just by way of that being a requirement from a compliance perspective. So, but it's certainly not something at this stage one could link to, to managing volatility or dealing with currency depreciation or other uh, challenges that policy might be dealing with. It, that's not meant to address that. Well, that was Deputy Governor of the South African Reserve Bank, Daniel Minnele.